come now, that I might anoint myself with thy power. Horror sure does come in all shapes and sizes. And sometimes, size really does matter. The smaller they are, the dastardly and more vicious they become. Well, we're at that time of the month again. I don't think that's very funny. Eh, yeah, I know, starting out with a lame body joke, but let's move on. It's time for another horror movie ripoff, which brings about two pint-sized demonoids covered in fur. These things possess not just some of the gnarly looking features, but can be misconstrued and mistaken for one another. Hell, as I'm reading this, I'm starting to get brain fog as to who's who. But in the end, they're both unique, and seem like they're both concocted out of H.P. Lovecraft's twisted and nightmarish tales. It's a shame that this wasn't a three-way. Ah, sorry, I did it again. I mean to say, it's unfortunate that this segment wasn't a triple threat bloodbath, but maybe another time for that. Today, we're discussing and seeing if there is a ripoff in tow between 1985's Ghoulies, directed by Luca Bercovici, and 1986's Critters, directed by Stephen Herrick. Come on in and let's go over the little details in this next episode of Horror Movie Ripoff. <laughs> Before diving in between the creature war of critters versus ghoulies, there lies a spider web of legalities which happen to involve Joe Dante's gremlins. Both ghoulies and critters seem to have ripped this movie off. Funnily enough, Warner Brothers, which is the producer of Gremlins, tried to sue Charles Band and the Ghoulies production team as they were both in production at the same time. Due to lack of funding for Ghoulies, Joe Dante's Gremlins was able to finish on schedule with zero budgeting concerns and was theatrically set to launch first. However, Critters was written way before both films by director Stephen Herrick. These three films are stuck in an entanglement of what idea spawned first. All of them possess furry, ravenous beasts. The real question is what is the ultimate small creature feature that you prefer? All right, now let's dive into the real showdown, Ghoulies vs. Critters. <laughs> Ghoulies and Critters are both some gnarly little monsters, but their origins are totally different. While the Ghoulies are brought into the world via satanic rituals unbeknownst to party guests, the Critters, aka Krites, inhabit a spaceship and proceed to Earth to cause some fun-filled mayhem in all its ridiculous splendor. They've stolen one of our fastest ships with enough fuel to cross the galaxy ten times over. So fuel is not their concern. However, you must stop them before they can feed. Both the Critters and the Ghoulies have some similar traits within their monstrous forms. Both have razor-sharp teeth, are covered with hair, and are squeamish to look at. Although Ghoulies don't roll around and have porcupine-esque needles popping out to shoot at their victims, and they don't communicate in sync with one another, since they don't possess Krite language. However, they both do chomp and chomp and chomp. You get some ghoulies that look like mutant sewer rats, or slimy green toad monsters that like to hang out in people's soup, which makes for some good scene chewing, no pun intended. Both the ghoulies and the critters like to be around one another, and there's nothing like the bond between packs of mutant baby-sized psychos to deliver the chaos at the forefront. <laughs> Both Critters and Ghoulies have more than just creatures that command the screen. In Ghoulies, there are two dwarves, Grizzle and Greedigut, who do dirty deeds for Jonathan when he's possessed under his father Malcolm. We are here, Master. What would you have of us? I will have you soon. Although they are not considered actual Ghoulies, they are part of the satanic occult ritual that manifest them and the ghoulies when they are eventually summoned. They help Jonathan seek the powers that be from his father's cult, and are under his beck and call throughout the film. In Critters, we don't get evil doors, but two formidable bounty hunters, Ugg and Lee, looking to destroy the Krites that escape from prison. We want the Krites. Oh, really? Who are they, some new team? <laughs> when they get to Earth, they have the power to shapeshift into other humans to go undetected. One changes into a well-known rock star, while the other inhabits various townspeople. They go about town driving cars, blowing up bowling alleys, and blasting pesky krites away. And they sure do know how to bowl a strike. Holy shit! <laughs> 
While critters and ghoulies end on some good moments, they both also leave on cliffhangers. Whether it's the climactic battle between Malcolm and Wolfgang and ghoulies, or the destruction of the critters via explosion thanks to Brad Brown and his family friend Charlie, you think that evil has been conquered, never to return again. Nope. You're dead wrong. In Ghoulies, the survivors get into the car and leave the Graves estate before it crumbles, only for the last shot to end with the Ghoulies surprising our heroes in the back seat. In Critters, the Brown family, with the help of the bounty hunters and the local fuzz, destroy what we thought was the end of those furry little bastards. Nope, wrong again. The cop car drives away and the camera leads us into the farm where, guess what, critter eggs are seen moving in the haystacks, along with some crites cackling inside them for some future hijinks and feastings. <laughs> Usually when a movie is marketed by the film's poster, you get a taste for what's to come. With that infamous poster of the ghoulie popping out of the toilet, sneering with devilish glee at the camera, you think to yourself, damn, my fear of being on the toilet has just been spawned. What's even better is that infamous ghoulie's poster was an afterthought by Charles Band. He created that poster and then shot the clip after production was finished. Well, in Critters, they wanted to drop a loving nod to Ghoulies by showing their own furry demon popping out of the toilet inside the Brown household. Nothing like imitation to get a few laughs between the two IPs. <laughs> For a movie in the 1980s, right when horror has hit a fever pitch with its carnage, Ghoulies doesn't really have much by the way of bloody goodness. For a movie about ravenous, vicious little monsters, no one really dies, which is truly upsetting. What seemed like Jonathan's friends being dispatched towards the end of Ghoulies gets reversed when they are resurrected, when Malcolm is destroyed, and they just go back to their merry ways as if nothing ever happened. Critters, on the other hand, has some great gags involved, like a cop being eaten under a car, or a poor cow getting ripped to shreds. Holy shit! or that awesome Billy Zane getting devoured before getting it on with April. Those krites do not hold back when it comes to wanting human flesh, because to get bigger, they need to eat. There's honestly just a ton more going on for Critters, whereas Ghoulies doesn't have much of a threat other than some possessions and rituals. Critters brings galactic spaceship chases, wannabe Terminator bounty hunters, some great horror tone and atmosphere, and Critters eating and destroying everything within their sight, including a poor E.T. stuffed toy, and also Billy Zane sporting a 1980s ponytail. What's not to love? It seemed like Critters wanted to emulate and enhance what Joe Dante's gremlins were doing, only supplying a bloodier affair this time around. <laughs> Between Ghoulies and Critters, both have a female character needing saving by the end of the film. In Ghoulies, Jonathan's love interest, Rebecca, is shoved down a flight of stairs and dies, only to be resurrected once evil in the form of Malcolm Graves is defeated by Wolfgang. In Critters, April is abducted by what appears to be the Alpha Crite of the pack, the gigantic critter that tries to escape via spaceship. The brother, Brad, goes into the spaceship and rescues his sister from being a nice snack for the way home. Both movies use the damsel in distress trope to keep pushing the story forward and produce a happy ending until those pesky creatures show up for round two. <laughs> Critters and Ghoulies may have had the same premise in that they both possess two types of horrific creatures looking to destroy humans. That's apparent, but honestly both films seem to trot down their own beaten path, bringing in fantastical elements. Sure, they share similar tropes in their films, but here lies the bigger picture, a Gremlins vs Critters showdown. Imagine who would take the crown of being king of the hill of these pesky, razor-sharp mutants when the dust settles. As it is, both films have spawned many sequels and delivered memorable moments. Truthfully, even if Critters was created due to the success of both Ghoulies and Gremlins, the film is much more enjoyable than Ghoulies and stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with Gremlins. But that could be a fight for another day. And hey, if you like what you see, subscribe to Joblo Media today.